Hi, this is Lauren Fogelman at ExpertSportsPerformance.com, working with highly driven, motivated athletes on having more focus, confidence, the ability to effectively deal with distractions as they occur for consistent high performance. Today's topic is Victoria Azarenka's lesson, The Five Signs of Confident Athletes. It's time we raise the bar for sportsmanship. If you look in the sports pages, you see news about addiction, abuse, arrests, and taking advantage of the timeout rule. During the Australian Open, when Victoria Azarenka was playing against Sloane Stephens of the U.S. in the semifinals, that's exactly what happened. Victoria recognized that she might lose the match to Sloane. She got out of the moment, lost confidence, and focused on the fact that she might possibly lose the title for the Australian Open. She called a medical timeout, complaining about difficulty breathing from a rib injury. During the 10 minutes that she was receiving treatment, Sloane Stevens was just sitting on the bench rate waiting. It's that point where the competition turned because it just diminished the intensity of the event. Victoria came back. She was able to regain composure. She ended up winning the match. But what happened is her ego and her confidence were in battle with one, of one another. Her ego became very selfish, it became fearful. It got small and she ran with it. She couldn't get out of her own way of what could possibly happen, not only losing the title, but losing her rank as number one single women's tennis player in the world right now. If she would have gone with her confidence, she would have known that she's been in this situation before She's pulled through because otherwise she wouldn't be ranked number one in the world right now. And if she did it before, she could have pulled from that memory and done it again. But she didn't go there. Instead, she went somewhere else down a different road. That's what happens when your ego takes over and really goes with the fear, the what ifs, the anxiety raising, as opposed to playing from a place of confidence, strength, and knowing that you can do it, believing that it's possible. So one of the other things that happened, which she'll never even recognize, is because of her breakdown and not being able to come from a place of confidence that led to a breakthrough, she robbed herself of a really important lesson. She robbed herself of the ability to really deal with the adversity, learn from it, so that when she was in a similar situation next time, she could have a different outcome. I understand that at this point, there's a lot on the line, not just titles, there's a lot of money connected to it also, so sometimes you do whatever is necessary. But when you do whatever is necessary at the point of integrity, compromising your values, and poor sportsmanship, I'm not sure if you're really winning. So really, let's look at what she could have done to have transcended behind, beyond the fear, and what you can do when you're in that similar situation too. First, there's creative confidence. It's about exploring new ideas, trying them out, and recognizing that a lot of times there's non-obvious solutions that occur when you allow yourself to really go with the flow and let it roll like it's supposed to. After that, it's about construction. Construction is looking at the fact that you have a wealth of experiences within your mind and that you have to allow yourself to have these experiences. They really, really matter and that you can learn so much from taking action on what's possible and going with it and taking the risks. Because it was the history of risks that Azarenka taught, took over the years, that really put her in that number one position now anyway. But instead of going with what she's known to work, she went with something else and played a smaller game. After that, it's about connection. Once again, go into your memory bank of when you've had difficult experiences, you had adversity, you showed up, you took that risk, and you had a positive outcome. Because connecting with the fact that you've done it before lets you figure out how you can do it right now, too. And that's one of the things that Victoria wasn't able to do because she was in an ego, fear-based mode. She got small, and she just reacted instead of acted. And if you're going to go ahead and connect with those uh, 
previous experience, what that lets you do is it lets you have critical thinking. And when you're in these really clutch moments, you want to be able to quickly decide what you're going to do, commit to it, and then let go. Allow it to happen. Because the more that you try to force something, the more there's going to be this lack mentality, this resistance going on, and it just kind of digs you deeper and deeper into the fear. So you have to let it go and just know that you have the ability, the beliefs, the experience to take it through to a positive outcome. And the bottom line is about combined effort. Combined effort is once again deciding on that strategy that's going to come up with the critical thinking and then trust that your body knows what to do. And that's how you get out of your own way is you step back and trust and stop thinking and when you stop thinking it gets you present centered. So having that combined effort of deciding on the strategy and then getting out of your own way and trusting that it'll happen is really where the real challenges happen, the real breakthroughs happen, and it lets you step into a bigger part of yourself. The bottom line is because she was focused on her fear and her ego was in control at that moment, she wasn't able to stay cool, calm, and collected under pressure. Azarenka failed to push back. When the heat was on, she shrunk and she couldn't answer back. And that's why Sloan Stevens had the court advantage at that moment. The bottom line though is if she knew what was possible, she stuck with her confidence, what she believed she could do, she would have transcended to a higher level of sportsmanship. She would have been coming from a place of power and empowered as opposed to a place of lack and fear. What I want you to look at as far as your challenge is what do you need to do to be able to perform under pressure? One of the things to look at is creating what I call an emotional bank account. Think about all your previous experiences where you were in these really tight moments, you stuck with it, you performed confidently, and you had a positive outcome. You took a risk, and you learned so much from the risk. So go ahead and put deposits of these positive experiences into your emotional bank account. Then the mem- then the memories will be stored there and when you're in one of these really challenging moments where you're starting to go into doubt and fear, you can take a withdrawal of one of these memories and recognize that you did this before and you can do it now. That helps you to bridge the memory. So bridging the memory is about looking at what you've done before that was similar and that you had a positive outcome or so much that you learned from it and if it happened then, you can do it now. Bridging that gap is really, really important. It helps to build the confidence when you're in that really crutch moment, helps you let you step up, take that risk, trust that you know what to do, and that it'll work out like it's supposed to. Once again, if you did it once, you can do it before. Go ahead and click the Facebook likes, write a comment letting me know what you took away from this. If you're interested in the seven seven essential steps for peak performance, Go to my website, expertsportsperformance.com, put your name and email address in the boxes, you'll immediately get the first video of the training series. My goal is to show you how to stay cool when the heat is on. Lauren Fogelman, expertsportsperformance.com.